All right, so this project will take you the longest, okay? I did this project at University of Tulsa. I spent about 80 hours of actual working on it. Now, I'm telling you that because I did it multiple times. I did it over and over and over. I used, you know, I did a bunch of different ways just to the point where I could, go, I could get them done in like 30 seconds. So I, I thought it was kind of cool. Even Cameron today, what did you re retrieve? Pings? I, I instead of PNGs? Five, I hacked five pings. Today. Yes, he, he hacked five pings. And once you figure it out, it's kind of cool and it does get easier. But do not wait until Tuesday at 4 o'clock and decide to start this project. You will not finish. You the office one. Okay? Uh, now, so uh, if you look under the course content page. So what if we need to ask you something? Not for this one. Yeah, you have something that we need to ask. Pen testing, you can ask me one question. No. No, you, you have something on here about there. We need about. to ask. Oh, yes, good point. Good question. Good question. Okay, I will get to that. I will get to that. Once we do them, I will get to that. Okay. Um, but under the software needed, you need Hex Editor, right? Where's Hex Workshop? Right there. Hex Workshop. Okay. Um, I have a key if you would like it, but don't upgrade it. Okay. A lot of it will ask you to upgrade because there's many newer versions, but I don't have a key for that. And it does function differently on the newer version. So I mean, it's, I mean, you can use WinHex. There's a million hex editors out there, so I'm fine with all of them. <coughs> but don't come to me and say, "Hey, I'm using blah 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 hex editor, and I can't figure it out how to do it." No, the, the use the one I'm using. Okay. All right. So it's right there to download. Now under Lab Two, right here, this is an an image file. Okay. Um. I'll actually add a video up there of how to make images as well. I already have it made. I'll just add it in there. But that's the image file you're going to be working with, which I'll show you today. Okay. Download it. It's about 67 meg or gig. Meg. It's meg, isn't it? I hope. Yeah, yeah, I hope it's it's that many gigs. Gigs. It might take a while. <laughs> it's meg. It's meg. Download that file, and you'll also see the questions. These are the exact questions from the quiz. Okay. So what, find the answers, and then just write them all down somewhere. Then when you got them all, then go into the quiz and submit them. Okay. Okay. These are the exact questions. Now, there's no trick involved here. So, but, I mean, you can go add them to the quiz as you want. That's fine. <coughs> but the way it works is, first of all, what's the MD5? But, you know, that's the only one that's not a picture. The rest of them all, here's a picture. For the image shown was the starting sector... And the ending sector. So I tell you that for every picture. So if you retrieve a picture that's not on this list, I don't care. Don't tell me about it. Okay. There's, there's 47 or 48 questions, I think. There is a theme to this. I don't know if you've noticed yes. what the theme is yet. Okay. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, so there is a theme to this that will come in handy in about six weeks, just so you know. You would believe how many people get that question wrong. So there's the questions you're going to work with right there, okay? Um, and there is the actual assignment. What the assignment says is I'm giving you a bunch of stuff, and I want you to retrieve some stuff. Okay, I have a flash drive that I put a bunch of files on. Then I deleted them all. Then I formatted it. And now I need to get everything back again. So you need to retrieve five GIFs, five BMPs, five JPEGs, PNGs, PPGs, five of everything. With the exception of there's only one MP3 file and one executable. Now JPEGs. When you search for JPEGs and also PNG, there's five. But you're going to find 150. The reason is, if I have a PowerPoint or a PDF or, an ex or a Word document with a picture in it, that shows up as a PNG or a JPEG as well. So make sure you do the ones, and I'm going to show you how to tell which ones you need to retrieve. It's very simple to tell the difference. I showed that to the camera, and he's like, oh, really? It's quite simple to do, as long as you follow some certain steps. But that's what you need to retrieve. And all you need to tell me is the starting and ending location. Okay? Um, 
it's different than it's, I've ever had you guys submit it, but it, and, and it's numbers, so either right or wrong. If you're off by one sector, it's wrong. Just saying. So All right. There's five, there's five of those in each picture? Or? Oh, no, there's five GIFs. Okay. And, okay. Five BMPs, five of everything. Okay. So when you start searching for something like PNGs, I'll show you how to tell which ones are the ones you need. Same with JPEGs. I'll show you how to tell which JPEGs are retrieved. Because there's 160 something JPEGs. You don't want to retrieve 160 of them and find the right five. You just want to get five certain ones. And I'm going to show you exactly how to tell the difference. It's quite simple. And there's a video up there which you really, really need to watch. How to extract a Word document. It's five minutes long. That's all it is. That is such an important video. It's going to tell you everything about sector size and how that works and file containers. Now, speaking of that, I'm going to open something up here. I'm going to go into this file, right? I'm going to open this Word document. Okay, there's the five files I need. Okay, let's make sure they're actual Word documents. So you don't think I'm cheating. Do you all agree that's a Word document? Okay. But what if I change the extension to ZIP? Now what is it? Where is the Word document? Okay, it only works in the new version. Well, hell. Okay, hold on. I got to change it. Let me do a different one. Let me go to this one. I'm going to change your quiz questions, okay? See how it says DOCX? I'm going to change this to ZIP. Okay. Now I'm going to open it. And there it is. Because Word is actually a container. So is Excel and PowerPoint. It's actually a container. This contains all your themes, all the settings for it. So that was a document. You saw that. I just named, renamed it to ZIP. So just know it's... It's still a Word document, but there's all the you know XML document, and there's all the stuff that pertains to the settings and all your styles. So yeah, you can actually open up Word documents with a zip it file. As a, and let me change it back. Okay, now I'm gonna go back, and this was it. And you'll see it does open. It is an actual Word document, but Word documents are containers, so you need to. Okay, so it is an actual Word document. So Excel works the same way in PowerPoint. So you'll notice they all actually have the same beginning. Okay. So let's see how this works. Okay. Everybody got a basic idea of what they're going to do. You're going to retrieve files. You don't know how to do it yet. You're just going to retrieve files. Okay. And you're going to start soon. Okay. We have a program called Hex Workshop. Okay. Very simple to use. Now, I was put some files here. Now I'm going to go to, what I did is I actually made multiple copies of the image this year. I made a blank copy. So you can actually take the image and drop it right into Hex Workshop. Okay? It's a blank copy. Does that look blank to anybody? Doesn't look blank. But it is. It's just that we still have some of the sector in the file, the fat information on there. Okay? It's just blank. There's no files on it. Okay? I actually used a program called Secure Delete to wipe out everything to make sure it's all gone. But that's kind of, you know, a way you can think about it is when they build a road, can, do we use the entire road? No, because we have a line down the middle, we got sides on it, we only drive on a portion of it. Same way on a disk. You don't use the entire disk because part of it's for file location table, part of it's the directory structure, so there's a lot of parts we don't use. So that's some of that stuff we don't use, okay? I'm going to close that file. So that's what it looks like. You'll see it's actually blank after the beginning information. It's just very short amount of stuff. But it is blank. Y'all agree that's blank? Okay. Now I went ahead and I added some files. And that is after format, blank, with files. Here we go. There it is. You'll see there's some files on there. And you'll see they're on there. Y'all agree there's files there now? Yeah. Okay. Definitely files, but the beginning stuff's still the same. Then I took that same image, the same drive, and I deleted all the files. Okay. There it is again. So this is an image after I deleted the files. Let's 
So if I deleted all the files, then why are they here? What happens when you delete a file? Yeah, just remember it removes the location of the disk. All right, what it actually does, it goes to the file name, changes the first character to hex value E5, which is a sigma character. That way the operating system knows, hey, that file is no longer needed. An easy way to tell, try copying a multiple gigabyte file. And then delete it. Which one takes longer? The copying. This is actually making a copy. Deleting, up deleted instantly because it's just going into the file name and deleting the first character. You can still use undelete. You can still get it back. It's just that the first character is missing. Okay. So you see, even though I deleted all the files, they are still there. Okay. You all agree with that? Okay. Now I'm going to format it. So now I took the image and I formatted it. Okay, we got the same beginning information. So again, I formatted it. So why are they still there? <laughs> well, what is formatting? Well, formatting takes away the directory structure. It's kind of like taking your textbook and deleting the glossary in the back. Is the book still there? So can I search and find stuff? Yeah, I just can't look up and say, oh, like today I was looking to buy some pens. I would never knew there were so many pens. Because <laughs> we get crappy pens. Here. And there's a really cheap pen I like, but they don't sell them anymore. So I said, just show me this stupid book. So she showed me this book, very big book. And there was like 10,000 pens in it. I mean, there was, I looked at the glossary. I found out the pens start on page 1,002. They went on forever. I would have never known there were so many pens. But what if there was no glossary on the back? <laughs> could I have found the pens? I could have. I could have gone through and got to the page 1,002, and that would have been where the pens started. So formatting it deletes the glossary at the back. Doesn't delete the data. Obviously, the data is still there. It's just that we are wiping out your contacts, pretty much. I mean, we're wiping out the listing of how to find them. Do you all understand the difference? Okay, pretty, pretty simple stuff. That's what you're working with. This one right here. So you can agree the files are still there. We just can't find them. Now, um, you know, let me check something. I hope it's installed. I didn't check it. Access data, FTK Imager. Okay, there's a program called FTK Imager. It's also on the software needed folder. I'm going to show you how this works. Okay. Now I'm going to use this program. I'm going to add evidence. It's going to be an image file. I'm going to get it off of my desktop desktop forensics lab 2. I'm going to open up the first image that has that's blank. Okay. Finish. Okay. So I'm opening this up in an imager. I go to the root and there's nothing there. But, but there was some stuff deleted. It's not the actual files, but there was some stuff there. Okay, because that was secure delete actually makes a small entry of the big image drive is what you're looking at there. But you can see this is this is deleted. Okay. Now I'm going to add another item, add evidence item, image file again. Now I'm going to add this time the one with the pictures in it. With files. Okay. And voila. Now we got some pictures. So if I went to JPEG, I should be able to get on here and see all the different JPEGs. So those are the actual files. So that's the image where I put the files on there. Not deleted, not nothing. They're just on there. Okay. Now let me open another image. File, add evidence, image file. <coughs> I do, I do have a video of how to use this tool, in case you're wondering. <coughs> now we want to have deleted files. So now I went in and deleted all the files. So are they gone? Yeah. No, they're not gone. But they've been marked as gone. Okay? Now they all have a red X on them. See that red X? But they're still there. Okay, so even though they've been deleted, you can see now they are still there. So now let's open the last image. Add evidence item, image file, browse, and we are going to do after format. 
oops, click it, and then stop. There it is. Okay, so after format. Huh. You notice how the whole file structure is now missing? Because we deleted the glossary. We deleted the file allocation table. Now there's nothing. But are they still there? They're not there anymore. They wonder why? Well, they're not in the root of the drive, but they are in what's called unallocated space. Because okay, we haven't used that space. When you have a drive, it really starts off as all unallocated space. I haven't done anything with it. There's no files on it. And that's what this is. So it's still there. It's not in the root of the drive, because if it was in the root of the drive, we would know about it, because it's an actual file. But since, they're not, since they've been deleted and formatted, there are no files, so it's all in the unallocated space. So if we go there, then obviously they're all there. Okay? So you all see the difference in a blank one, then with files and deleted, and then after format. I never showed it this way before, but I thought it would be cool for you all to see what it actually looks like in, a, in an image editor. It goes really easy and really hard. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to work with the really hard one. I know you're excited. Okay. So how do we do this? How do we get them back? Now, if we were over here and we just had the deleted files, I'd sit there and then, then I'd just say export the file. We're done. Because it knows where to find it. It still has the file, even though it's been marked for deletion. It says, I know where you are. I know where you start. I know where you're in, so I can get it for you. But the other ones you're going to be working with, not so much. Now, you can actually use this tool to even get the deleted one, even the formatted one. You're just going to have to search. But it's easier to search in the hex header. Because you'll notice at the bottom here, let me bring up the other one again. Unallocated space. We actually have a hex editor there. It's just easier to use Hex Workshop. Cause it, so you can actually do it in here if you wanted to. It's just easier the other way. Okay, so far so good? Everybody happy? Maybe? Somewhat? Okay, let's move on. Now, Hex Workshop. First of all, you're going to need a website for this to work, do this job. And it's not Google. I know. There's one of the few times where I don't tell you to go to Google's page. Search for Gary Kessler. Not Lesler, Kessler file signatures. Gary Kessler is a, works up at Marine Valley, I think. I forget exactly what school he's at. Awesome guy. I met him at a couple conferences. And he has probably put together the best page with information about doing this. You will need his page. Positively need it. So go to his page right here. I mean, it's the first one. If you type Gary Kessler file, even if you type file signatures, you'll find this page. It's Gary Kessler file signatures. And what he does is he brings up all this information, which you need, okay? Let me show you why that's important. Okay? If I have my hex editor, now, you saw that I took the Word document and renamed it to a zip file and opened it. Why did it open with a zip? Because Windows is reading the extension, okay? So Windows relies on file extensions, okay? Forensic tools don't care. Forensic tools look at the signature. Because, you know, when I was in the military years ago, back in the, I guess, mid-90s, I was in an area, where, you know how you can't play games with military machine, military computers? Mm -hmm. So what you do is you take Solitaire, that was the only game back then, take Sol.exe, which was a Solitaire game, rename it something like Timesheet.doc. Then when you want to play Solitaire, you just rename it to Timesheet.exe. Play Solitaire, then rename it to Doc, and no one ever found it. It's pretty simple. Because what happens is Windows goes by the extension. But is that really true? No, it's not. That's where file signatures come into play. Okay. So this is an assignment page for you guys. Or the quiz question page. This is just a PDF file. So if I was to take this PDF file and change it to a DOC, what do you think will happen? It's going to try to open it in Word. Uh, uh, can't do it. Ain't going to do it. So we know Windows won't know what to do with it. Okay. But how can we find out what to do with it? So I'm going to change it back so we don't screw up my file. I can actually take this file, drop it into Hex Workshop. Okay. 
That's just a normal PDF. So when you want to figure out how to do the PDF, just take a PDF and put it in there. Go on Google and type some file .pdf and you'll get one, or .png or .tiff, or get a sample. Dump it in there, and you'll notice something. See this here on the right? I know it's hard to see in the cheap seats in the back, but all PDF files start with percent .pdf. Okay? So if I was to search this huge image for PDFs, what would be a good thing to search for? Percent .pdf. I mean, it makes sense. Now, this is the ASCII on the right, or the string value. Percent PDF translates to 25504446. Now, let's verify that. I'm going to go over here to Gary's page, and I'm going to type PDF. Oh, well, look at that. I can search for the string percent PDF or 25504446. Isn't that what I just showed you? knew the right answer. Now, how do I know where it ends? Because if I find the beginning and it starts with PDF, well, I need the ending because I want to get everything in between. So if you go to the ending of the file, oh, it ends in percent percent EOF for end of file. So now we can go to the beginning, search for percent PDF, find that, then find the next percent percent EOF, copy everything in the middle, we got a file. You like that? What? Oh, okay, we're going to copy it out, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. We'll copy it out and save it. Well, okay, and we also have more percent PDFs as well. PDF, what happens is if you have a multiple page PDF, it actually saves each page separately. It's like you have the overall container, then a bunch of pages inside of it. I know. So you can actually export a single page of a PDF. And it's also like JPEGs. JPEGs actually store a thumbnail of themselves inside themselves. So you can actually extract a thumbnail of a JPEG from inside of a JPEG. It's kind of... But I'm going to show you how to tell which is the right and which is the wrong. Okay. So according to Gary, the ending is all this stuff. Why would you have multiples? Well, because PDF changed. There's always a new version of it. So he says they end in either this or this or this or this. So if one doesn't work, you get the next one. Okay, it's not that hard. Okay, and then that's the ending of it there. Yeah, that was just working with a straight PDF. We knew it was a PDF. It's not an issue. Now let's just try a different file so we can make sure I'm not lying to you. I'm going to take, uh, let's do what Cameron calls them, the pings. <laughs> so, you know, let's work with Assassin's Creed. Dump that in there. The Assassin's Creed, what do you think it might start with? Dot PNG. Yeah, now, that's not a dot, in case you're wondering. <coughs> ASCII can only show certain characters. Now, if that was a dot, if this was a dot right there, that was a dot. You see how it's hex 89? So, I mean, this is also a dot, so it should be hex 89. It's not, it's hex 0D. And this is zero A, and so on and so forth. So the dots don't don't mistake them for dots. They're not. It's just a non-printable ASCII character. That's why on Gary's page over here for the PDF, you'll notice you know some. This starts with a dot, but that's zero D. This starts with a dot, but it's zero A. They do vary. So don't think a dot's a dot. A dot could be a dot. It's most likely not a die. It's most likely a non-printable character. Okay. So we know how to find those. So PNG starts with dot PNG. PNG ends with 426082, I'm assuming. Let's look for PNG and see what Gary says. PNG. Okay. Starts with PNG. In other words, 8950. And you can actually see the character there. It's some funky looking character. The trailer is 4945, 4E, 4, 4, so on and so on and so on and so on. If I was to look here, it's there. The 4945, 4E, 4, 4, that's the actual trailer for PNG. So Gary does have the correct information. And he updates his page all the time. This was updated last month. So, which is kind of cool. He's always adding new stuff to it. So, I showed you the easy way to find out what these signatures are. But, you know, it's New job's a lot tougher than that. I'm going to bring in 
your file, for instance, the one you're going to work with, lab two after format, right there. Okay. Now, this is the one with all the stuff in there. All right, so what did we learn about PDFs? How, what did they start with? So if I did edit, find, I need to change this to string percent PDF. Now I'm going to find all of them. Say go. How many PDFs are on my file? Five. five of them. So those are the five. So you're good. It's not an issue. But let's go to pa Gary's page here. I want to find a JPEG. <laughs> okay, what do JPEGs start with? Yo, 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 ya. Yo. It starts with FFD8. Everybody see that? So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to do edit, find, change this to hex. I'm going to type in FFD8. And there is. <laughs> 2,617 of them. I hope you've got nothing planned for this week. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I typed in FFC8. But, see, I typed in FFD8. I could type in more. So let's add some more to it. FFD8, FFE0. Edit, find. So FFD8, FFE0. So now we are drastically reducing our number to 173. That's better. Yes. What if you, how many uh, trail ending characters? But we really need to, actually there's multiple trailers for PDFs. No, J JPEG, I'm sorry, there's only one. FFD9 is the only trailer. But you need to know which beginning goes with which ending. Okay. So I'm going to go over here and click on a couple of them. Cameron, without telling why, is that a good file? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, let me show you something that's very important. In this editor, it's very critical you show 16 columns. And if you watch that other video, I specifically state that. And the easiest way to do that is go Option Preferences, show 16 right there. See that? But if you make it full screen, it actually screws it up. So the option preferences. Okay, this one. Yeah, there it is. Now it's 16. Okay. But no, that's not 16. I'm sorry. 32. My fault. It needs to be 32. Because there are actually four per row. There it is. That's. If you were to count those columns, there's actually 16 of them. The reason is this is one, this is two. So there's actually two here. So you really want 32 columns. But you really need to be showing 16 because, let me explain how computers store data. Okay? You have sectors and clusters. What the computer is, you, you take your hard drive and you break it into chunks. Imagine me going to your house and taking a cabinet, which is your hard drive. You're probably going to put some boxes in there. Okay? Or containers, or maybe you do that Tupperware thing and get all filled with Tupperware. So you have these things you're going to be putting stuff into. Hopefully you don't just throw everything in there. What happens with your hard drive, it's broken up into sectors. And in this case, they are 512 byte sectors. That means the smallest unit of data a file can use is 512 bytes. So if I have a text file that's two bytes long, it's taken a 512. Let's think about it. I got all this Tupperware in my house. I'm going to put one spoon in it. I still used up all the space because that's the spoon's Tupperware or the cracker's Tupperware or the spaghetti Tupperware. But that's all it can be in there. So I really, even though I have one spoon in there, I wasted the entire container. But I might get more spoons. So the way it works is we have this sector, which is 512 in this case. It goes by the device, and this one happens to be 512. Okay? So it breaks it into these chunks, and files have to start at the beginning of the chunk of the sector. Okay, the 500 and If you find a file that's not at the beginning, then that means it's embedded in another file. And by making this 16 rows wide, they will always start at the left column. So let's click on a couple of them. So I click right here. 
That is not, make sure I got 16 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I got the right number. So that is not at the left column. So what that means is this is an embedded file. Don't retrieve that one. So go on down to, aha, there's one. That one starts at the left. Okay? And another way you can tell if it's correct, I'll show you. I'm going to bring up this thing called, oh, I want this one. Calculator. Okay, I'm going to go view scientific right here. Or no, view programmer. View programmer. Now, you all see this number on the left? This AA6E80. Okay, I'm going to go in hex, because that's hex. AA6E80. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go to decimal. I'm going to go to 512, because I told you 512 bytes is the sector size. But the numbers on the left are in hex. So what is 512 in hex? Well, if you type 512 in decimal, click hex, it tells you it's 200. So that being said, so if files start on sectors, should every place they start be divisible by 200? It should be. So this number, this AA6080, must be divisible by 200. So I'm now going to type it in AA6E80. I'm going to switch it to decimal. Actually, I can do it here, too. We can do it. Then we go divide by 200. And it's an even number. But actually, let me show you the decimal. It'll be easier to see. That's what we started with. I'm going to switch to decimal. Okay. Now divide that by 512, because remember it's 512, and it's an even number. Okay. Let's pick a different number. I'm going to pick the line above it. This is AA6E60. AA6E60. I'm going to convert that to decimal. I'm going to divide that by 512. And actually, I get another. Oh, well, crap. Okay, let me pick a different number. Hold on. Let me go over here. I'm going to look at this number down at the bottom. We are in the right view, aren't we? Yeah, okay. Zero, zero, AA, six, E, six, F. Okay, the decimal divided by five, 12. Yeah, it's not going to show me the decimal. Well, hell. I can't switch back and forth either. Well, that's stupid. Um, I can't show you the decimal. Well, that's going to suck. So you need a real calculator. Um, why, doesn't it show, why did they make it so it doesn't show decimal? That's like totally stupid. If you put in scientific, it can, but then you can't do hex. So okay, so let's try. Okay, let's go with. Actually, that's a good idea. <laughs> okay, this one is in scientific. That's just like stupid. Okay, so now we're going to go AA6060. For the decimal, copy, paste, <laughs> divide by 512. There it is. It's not an even number. Y'all see that? Now let's do the next one. AA6E80 is where the file should be starting. I know if you're not in the front row, you're not seeing these numbers, but it's okay. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go edit paste over here. That's not what I did. Copy. <laughs> edit paste. Oh, duh. Okay. Thank you. Copy. I had to put it in decimal first. That matches. So this one should be divisible by 512. Oh. It has to be. Did I type it wrong? A A. Oh, no, you just got burned. No, it has to be right. Six E eight zero. Hold on. That's decimal. But it's not decimal. The hell! It has to be divisible by zero. Well, it is. Trust me. It is. <laughs> I'll find out why, because that's weird. It is divisible. That is the end of the sector. Okay, well, pretend it was divisible by zero. Okay, that is weird, though. Why isn't it? 
shouldn't matter. Yeah, let me do this. Are we in? Ken, what? You were in the wrong base. That's was I? You have to make sure to do it on the right calculator. I was in the right one. Hold on. Hold on. Let me try something here. View. So I guess the better idea here is to just open up Excel, which is a real calculator. <laughs> it does real decimal. Well, pretend. <laughs> they're, they're correct. An easy way to tell if you're on the left side, you're in the right spot. Okay? That's the easiest way to tell. <laughs> they start on the left, they're good. So we know that's a real file. Is that a real file? No. no. How about that one? No. Oh, that one is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can very easily get down and see. Let's go. Let's do P and G. What was the P and G again? Anyone remember? Cameron, what is it? Was it dot? Percent. There is no spin. There is no dot. Okay. It is eighty-nine fifty. I don't know if I can paste this in. We're gonna find out. Okay. Hex. It can Damn deny. Me. Try, try the key binding. Deny. Oh, no, it doesn't want to like it. Oh, oh that oh, one worked. Oh, yes. Oh I right clicked and pasted it, and it worked. How are you feeling now, camera? Right clicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, what? Oh. You broke it. Failure. Take out the spaces. Oh, yes. I have to remove all the spaces now. I feel pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to find all those. All right, and then we have 73 of those. So if I was to retrieve this file here, would that be a valid file? No. no. That one no. would not be, that one would not be, yes. but that one would be. And it should be five in a row. One, two, three, four, five, and then the rest are not. <laughs> it's not, because it's actually starting on the right. It's misleading you. You think it's starting on the right, but it's not. All right, now you'll notice this is actually a perfect example. You notice how there's a bunch of space above it? See all that space? Well, it's hard to zoom, scroll here. See all that? Because what happens is, so if I bought that container to store my spoons in, and I stuck one spoon in it, I still have all that extra space. That's what these zeros are. This is all that extra space. Okay. Now, some files like P and G you can actually stop at the end of the file, um, at the end of the text, which would be right here. It's 8200. Okay? But that's not the answer I want. What I want to know is what is the end of the sector? Okay? Because even though the PNG ends at that location, and the way you tell what the location is, if you click, like I want to know the location of this 00. zero. Down here at the bottom, it gives you the actual offset. So up at the top, it's 27B1B60. Down here at the bottom, it's actually 27B1B6F. It's down here at the bottom. You can see it. Right here on the toolbar at the bottom, or the status bar at the bottom. The ending answer you want is at the bottom. That's the ending answer. Now, so even though this PNG ended here, what I want is the end. Now, if you're like Cameron, you're going to tell me, oh, since the next one starts here, the answer is 27B2000. Submit that and you'll be wrong. It's the one above it. It's the one above it. So, is the correct answer 271F E0? No. No. Because that's the beginning of that row. I actually need the last one on that row. So what you need to do is go all the way over here to that zero... That's that one, 27B1FF. FF. F. 3F. <laughs> Y'all understand that? Because if one starts here, the other one can't end at the same place. You can't have two files in the same location. So if it starts here, the other one has to end on the sector before it. So make sure you go all the way over here and get that one. So you're supposed to go until another file begins. Right. Okay. Great. Now... What happens if, okay, so I got the same container I'm putting my spoons in. Well, I like spoons, I guess. I got too many for the container. What happens? I put in another container. So I might have spoons that take two containers or three containers. 
But thanks to Roy, some of these are going to take a lot of containers. <laughs> well, thanks, Roy. Very large files. So you're going to need to find you know, where the spoon container starts and where the last spoon container. Now, there's something called fragmentation, which luckily for you, I'm not doing. Because think about it. So I got this, this container in my, in my kitchen. I got a container for spoons. Then I got a container for knives and container for whatever forks and everything else. Container for spoons got full, so what do I do? I add another container way down on the bottom row at the end, because that's where I'm at right now. I don't want to reshuffle everything, so I add the other spoon way down on the bottom right. That's what Windows does. When your file, when your sector gets full, like say you save a document, then you do other stuff. You surf porn or whatever. <laughs> That's saving it on your hard drive, taking up space. And you go to add more data to that document, so it's growing now. It's like, whoa, I can't save it in the very next spot because there's something there. So it starts in a location. And it actually links them. They're linked from one to the other. A lot tougher. We are not doing that in this project. Actually, in this class. So oh. We're actually starting a brand new option called Digital Forensics. It's an entire cybersecurity option of all friends and sources. And at that one, we'll actually have a file system forensics where we actually recover files like that. And you do this halfway through my degree program. We're always changing. <laughs> okay. But it won't be ready for a while. Okay. But, so, you might be using multiple sectors here, but they are contiguous. They are put all nice, next, neat, neat to it. That's what defragmenting is. You know how you should defrag your hard drive every now and then? <laughs> what that does is it puts all them, puts all the spoons together, shuts the forks and everything down to make room for the three spoon containers. Okay. What? You have to have the master file table to do right. the Yeah, you would. Does it format and kill that? Actually, no. Depending on your file, like NTFS, the very last. So, so basically, that zero, zero right there would actually be a pointer to the next location. But that's really with NTFS. Oh, God, that would be horrible. So you have to find sector one, then go to the end of sector one, find out how to get to sector two. Now, on Macs and Unix file system, they actually have a master index that says, oh, it's there, and then it's there, and it's there, and it's there. And it's, they're all done differently. But for you guys, they're all contiguous. You start at the beginning, you go to the ending. It's easy enough, OK? Yeah, I have one more question, though. Well, you're not even in this class. <laughs> I know, right? Since Still want to hear it. If you, if you export, uh, since these are all on 512, 512 byte containers, yes. if you take the actual file and you export that to something else, does it still export it as raw data or does it take the container? It'll have zeros at the end. It'll get the entire, even if you copy it, it's still same. Okay, so I took that file and saved it to my hard drive. Mm -hmm. It's still taking up some blank space. Now, that being said, this is off a fat formatted USB drive, 512 bytes. You can actually change it. You can actually change it to 4K even, which is, uh, you can change the size, small. The way, the way it works is, if you have a lot of small files, you want to have very small sector sizes. So if I'm saving a whole bunch of one byte files, why do I want to waste 512 bytes for every file? Because you want to make a license. So what you could do is if you were to take this file and save it at a new location with different sector size, it will then inherit the sector size of the saving location. And it will defrag it if it's also fragged. So. All right. So I'm going to be nice and not work off your actual image. <coughs> Darn it. That way you guys don't get any free answers. But I was nice enough to bring in the file from last year. Yes. Okay, we're going to retrieve a. <laughs> let's do a PNG file. They're small. Okay, how do I find a PNG again? What am I looking for? Percent PNG. Okay, I'm going to find. Was it percent PNG? Oh, yes. Oh, it's still there. Oh, was it? <laughs> All right, it was period PNG. Okay, find all my PNGs. This image has 10. Okay, is that a good one to work with? How about that one? How about that one? How about that one? How about that one? 
How about that one? No. Oh. Wait. No. 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 No? It's close, but the 89 is still yeah, selected over there. It's close. So luckily, when you when you retrieve your data, when you retrieve your files, I did copy them all in, and most of them are like Excel, 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 Excel. PNG, PNG, so you kind of got groups. But again, I just copied and pasted. Windows might not have done all of them that way. At least some of them. At least the PNGs were. Okay, so let's work on this. So this file starts, I'm going to get up a little notepad going here, starts at 515000. Okay, those of you in the back can't see that, but that's actually where it's starting. So from this location, I need to find the ending of it. Let's find what the ending is. The trailer is this whole bunch of hoopla here. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, from starting at that location, I'm going to edit, find, uncheck find all, change the hex, and I'm going to put that in there, like that, remove the spaces, okay, that's the ending. So now I want to tell it to go down, because I'm already at the top of my file, I want to go down to the ending. Okay, everybody with me? I'm going to say, okay, and there it is. There's the ending of it, okay? Now, with PNGs, I can actually see the ending. <coughs> if I put my mouse here, I can see it actually ends at 5222F9. F9. Okay, that's where it ends. And they are, that is a bigger number, so we know we did that correctly. Okay. So what we could do, actually, let's try this. No guarantees it's going to work. It might not. We want this. Let's bring up our hex. Let's type in 5222F9 minus 515000. And we get D2F9, correct? Let's, I've never tried this. Don't know if it's going to work. D2F9. I'm just going to try something. Okay, I want to go back to the beginning now. So we know where the beginning is. That's the beginning. This is the ending. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Now, you can actually click here and go down and scroll, but it's a pain in the butt. Scrolling doesn't work so well in here. But you can. You can you know, hold down your shift key and go down, and you'll keep making it bigger you know, and get it that way. Or we're starting there. You can actually go edit. Select block, size of block, how big is the block? D2F9, D2F9, and we're going to say, okay, let's check and make sure it actually did it. It should have selected all the way to the ending of the, holy majoli, oh, crap. Let's see if it actually selected correctly, though. Hey, it was one short. So we'd have to add one to it. Okay. And is that really a period or dot? Well, it's, I bet it ends in an 82. Let's look at his signature, but it ends in an 82. So if you subtract the two, you're going to have to add one. Okay? Just know that if you do what I just did, you're going to have to add one once you subtract them. Everybody see that? Okay, then I'm going to go over here, and I can do copy. Okay? Everybody okay? I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to go in here and say File New. I'm going to Paste. So you sure you want to do this? Yes. Now I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to call it png1.png because we know it's a PNG. I'm going to minimize all this stuff. Okay. I have a file here called PNG1. If I open it up, ta-da! we got a train. Oh, I know that game. <laughs> okay, everybody see how I did that? Now, let me try something here. There's one other option. Okay, so I'm going to close out my train one. Still got the other one. Edit. I'm looking for something. There is... There's another option I need to find. <laughs> Okay. We're going to try. 
All right, hold on. If this works, I'll explain what I'm doing. I like trains. <laughs> well, this time the team is I'm just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> no guarantees this is going to work. I want to see if it works. No, that didn't work. Hold on. I got to. There's a way in here. Save selection. I like the I think that'll do it. I think that'll solve our problem. Yeah, okay. Okay. I did something that I've never shown in, this is not in any other video, but, okay, there's a problem with Hex Workshop, and it will crash on you. If you go to very large files, select them, and do copy and paste, you know, copy a new file, paste is going to crash on very large ones. But what you can do instead of that, I select, you see how I selected it? That's where I left it at. I can go File, Save Selection, you know, myfile.png, and it'll automatically do it for you, and there it is. It works perfectly. That's the way you need to do it. It's much better. I, didn't, I never showed that in another video. Hey, everybody, see how I did that? So when you said add one, are you adding the one to the D2? Account? Right, it should be. D2F9, hold on, <coughs> plus one. Okay, D2F8. Or select it and just go one block. Okay, so everybody saw what we did. We found the beginning. Then from the beginning, we found the end. Now, you guys, I'm not making you guys extract the files. But I know if it'll work. So now. Now. But if you turn in those answers, if you were to turn in this answer right here, you would get half credit. Because I want the end of the sector. Okay? okay? The reason I'm telling you to do that is some of the file types, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you can't just get where it stops. You actually have to get the entire container. Okay? So how are we going to find the end of the sector? The easiest way is just find out where the next one starts. Yeah, we know the next one actually starts at 5, 2, 3. See right there? So, and we really want this guy right here, which is 5, 2, 2, F, F, F. So you need to get all the way to the end. I realize P, uh, PNGs will work if you don't get all that extra space. But Word will not work. It'll crash. You're like, why? Well, you need to make sure you got the entire end of the sector. Watch that five-minute video when I show you what happens if you do it wrong, and I show you how to add, fix it and all that stuff. Okay? So what you would submit would be like 5-2-F-F-F. 5 2 f f f which is right down here at the bottom. I selected the end of the sector. Or another way to do that, this, the, the next file starts at 5 2 3 0 0 0 Y'all see that? Yeah. So I'm going to my handy calculator and type in 5 2 3 0 0 0 Okay? Minus one. Done. There's your answer. <coughs> so since we know that these P and Gs are right after each other, put down the start of the first one, then go put down the start of the second one, subtract one, that's the end of the first one. <laughs> that will work. I'm serious. That will give you a perfect score. That's exactly how I did it. <laughs> but you need to make sure some of these work. I'm not saying you have to extract every one. The problem is, if you were to go for P and G's over here and found this P and G that's actually embedded inside of another file, then you're going to have an issue. And it's not going to work. So, but the easiest way is find the beginning of one, find the beginning of the next one, subtract one. That's the easiest way. Okay? I mean, I've never told the class that before, and I've never had them just tell me this location. Yeah, you always want to what? You wanted the images last semester. I wanted the images, but see, the, the issue I had was, okay, we got Marlene back there. Pretty good student. How do I know Marlene did the work and didn't share it with y'all? I don't know. That's why I want each of you to do it. But we've had in the past, I've actually had students cheat blatantly and all kinds of other stuff. But uh, So there's kind of an integrity thing. Because when you come to take the test, you're going to have to do this. If you don't know what you did, if you don't know how it works, you're going to be like, uh. And the way the test works, I ask you one question from each lab, usually. 
So you're talking like 14 questions for an entire exam. You miss one, that's you're down to pretty much a B. Miss two, you've got a C. If you don't know how to do it, you're going to have an issue. Yes. Um, yeah. If there is one embedded inside of the files embedded, can you still pull it out? Actually, a lot of times you can't, yes. Okay. You just have to find the ending of it. Yes. So first first question on the I know this uh, one. <laughs> oh, good point. Very good question. Okay. All right. He asked a very, very, very good question. Okay. When I created this, actually, let me quickly show. We got a couple of minutes. I'm going to show you how to make something. Okay. I'm going to create an image. Okay. Uh, I'm going to create a disk image. Now, when I create a disk image, I have a choice of doing a physical drive. What I mean by that is the entire hard drive. Okay, if that hard drive is partitioned into multiple drives, like C, D, and E, or if it's only partitioned part of it and the rest is empty, physicals can get everything. Okay, because you know the image you guys are working with, which is like 67 megabytes, it's actually what a 16 gig flash drive, something like that, isn't it? Was this? Those are two gig, two gig. Okay, well whatever it is, it's a lot bigger. So what I did is I partitioned it to only give you guys a small amount. Because I didn't want you guys to work with a huge piece. I wanted to give you just what you need. So physical would have gotten you what you needed plus a bunch of other stuff. But you don't need. Okay? Logical says get just. So if I partition a 2 gig drive into 500 megs, logical would only get you the 200 megs. That's what I did. Okay. But I can also image an image file. Okay. What's nice about that is, like a lot of people doing virtual stuff now with VMware, they actually store the hard drive in a VMDK file. You can actually image a VMDK file. So if you go out on a job somewhere and some of that virtual machine, you need one file, that's your entire system, your entire hard drive in one file. So that way you would be imaging an image file. VMDK is an image of a hard drive. Easy enough. Or you could also do contents of a folder. Maybe I want to image their documents folder only. <coughs> a lot of times when you go to court, they say, you are to look for this only. And they'll tell you it's stored on certain location. So then you go in there and say, okay, I have the ability to image the contents of the documents folder. The problem with that is you're not going to get all the extra files on the computer or the other stuff like that. Will you can also image the CD-ROM. Will it open ISO? Well, open one. You can actually do an ISO right there. You can image an ISO, the last option. Yes, yes you can. So I'm just going to do the contents of a folder. And it's telling you, hey, if you do this, you ain't going to get all the extra stuff. I know that. That's what I just told you. I'm just going to do, I'll do the lab one folder. Okay. I'm going to say finish. I'm going to say, okay, fine. Where do you want to put it? I'm going to say this is case number one. Next, where do I want to save it? I'm going to save it on my desktop, and we're going to call this one Cody since he asked the question. Okay? So he asked me, how big do I want to fragment this? 1,500. I can go 640. Maybe I'm going to copy it to CD-ROMs. Or I can be zero more and won't fragment at all. In other words, if I'm doing a, you know, I got a four terabyte drive at home. You image that, you can need at least a four terabyte space or break it into pieces. Most places would break it into pieces. Okay. They can also say compression, you know, smallest, fastest, whatever you want there. Okay. Now, I did make an entire video of doing this, which I will put up there for you. And by the way, if you don't know this, if you go to YouTube, search my name, you can see every class. I have, you can see every, there, I have like three or four years of video for this project alone. Obviously, the files you're working with are different. You're practically a YouTube star. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole, you know, the, the, the technique is still the same. So I... Recommend you go watch last year's and the year before and the year before. And, but remember, you know, if you're watching last year's video and it says your assignment is due Monday, well, it might not pertain to you this semester. So as soon as you, yeah, but you said, you know, well, it's not always the same. Okay. Now, this whole verify afterwards means it does it. Then it does it again. Make sure it actually did it correctly, which is a good thing. But we don't care because I just want to do this. Now, you'll notice under this destination, I can click add again. It can actually make multiple copies at the same time. Because you never want just one. You always want multiple. Maybe you want to store one locally to work with it and store another one on an external NAS somewhere for safekeeping. So you can add multiple. You can actually even add different types. 
You can add you know, an easier one, you can add a raw, you can add a DD, there's different types. And what that means is a DD is a disk image, a bit copy. Every bit was copied. It's not compressed, it's not anything. That's why you guys can see it in the hex editor. If I used an EO1 image, that is an encased file format. And what happens is it's compressed. It has special stuff to it, and you could not do it with a hex editor. We have tools to do it. But the whole point of this project is to see how to do it manually. Okay. Hey. Thank you. Okay. All right. So you can verify the image. You can, you know, the whole pre calculated statistics. I mean, if you're working with a four terabyte drive, yeah, you might want to say, okay, how long is it going to take? Oh, it's going to take six days or whatever. Okay. So, and you can also create directly real listings if you want. So I'm going to say start, and it should be done. Now, okay, it's already done. It's successful. I mean, that was pretty quick. Now, I can click image summary. It will actually tell me the MD5 hash. What a hash is, is a non-reversible number. Imagine I took a piece of paper. There's a piece of paper right here on this desk. And if I counted up the number of A's, the number of B's, and put in a certain thing for the black spots in the open area, and I did a mathematical calculation and got a number, this would pretty much be the only file that have that exact number. Well, once I write on it. There you go. It's the only one that's going to have this exact match. So even though this is the same picture, you notice now they're going to be different. Because if I was doing a calculation based on everything, one of them has the word high on it, one of them doesn't. So MD5 is a calculation of all of this. Okay? You cannot go backwards. It doesn't work. Imagine taking your windshield in your car. And smashing it. it goes into like a bazillion pieces. Can you put that back together? No. <laughs> so you can't go backwards. Okay. So that's what an MD5 checksum is. What that's for, say we had a computer from a crime. We image it when we start. We never work on the actual data, if you didn't know that. You always work off of an image. So we, we image the computer, and that computer, that hard drive, would give us an MD5 of the hard drive. Then we can also check the MD5 of the image, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second, and they should match. If I image it a year from now and they still match, are we still good? Yeah. They should always match. Because if I image this piece of paper 10 times, as long as the paper doesn't change, I should get the same number. <laughs> so we're verifying, because tell me, if you give me a different MD5 than what I give you, then you're not working off the right image. Your images have been corrupted in some way or another. Okay. So that's how you get it. And when you do it, it actually stores the file plus a text file with all that information on it. Okay. SHA-1 is just another type of checksum. Okay. I'm going to open here. I'm going to add an evidence item. I'm going to add an image file. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to pick last year's file, which is right there. So I brought that in. That's the image they used last year. And if I remember right, I gotta find it. Hold on, I can never find it. Is it properties? Okay, properties. Is that not it? Oh come on. Okay, one of these options has calculate hash. Where are we at? Not hex better interpreter because it sets. That shouldn't be. See, I thought we, it should be down there, I thought, but it's not there. Okay, there's a way to do it in here. I'll be darned if I can find it all of a sudden. Um, it's not properties. It's not that. Show hex value. That's not it. Image mounting. We don't want to do that. I could verify it. There it is. Done. There it is. Perfect. It's under verify. Okay, so under file, go verify image, and it shows you the MD5 of this exact file. I know it's hard to see, so but it's, fluid, but that's the number. You put that CDF whatever in there. Now, if th those of you who took this last year, that is the number. Or yeah. you can just go to an MD5. Get yeah, you can also get MD5 Summer. It's free on the internet. Call MD5 Summer, download it. And there's also Win MD5. There's like a million MD5 tools. And you basically type MD5 summer space file name, and it gives you the number. But we will be using FTK Imager later in this class, and I put it up there so you can just download it. Okay. 
it's a free tool, but not free. It's free if you own a license. And we own a license for it, so you can legally use it. We own a license. The weird thing is, even if you don't own a license, you can use it. But it's kind of one of those things. You really need to buy our product if you want to use it. And we do own it. We own 30 licenses. So you're not breaking any laws. Now, Hex Workshop, that's a different story. Um, okay. So, any, that's a very good question. That's the answer to number one. And another reason I put that in the quiz, so many people would skip that. What did you the, ask? He asked, how do you get, the question one on the quiz was, what is the MD5 of the image? And so many people in the last years, they'd get so excited about retrieving all the files that they would submit it without the MD5. I'm like, I told you to include that. I'm like, oh, I forgot. Well, now it's quiz question number one. What's the MD5? Okay. And if you want to verify that it's the correct image and you downloaded it correctly, just send that to me. Say, hey, is this the right image? And I can verify it with mine. Say, yep, that's the right image. Okay. Good to go on that. So... Um, the MP3 is a little different. It's the same basic steps, but the MP3 and actually the executable is going to be a little bit tougher to do. So, play well. <coughs> yeah, questions ask me, but, you know, don't come to me Monday. Hey, I just started this. I know it's due in a day. Come Tuesday morning. It ain't going to work. Just work on it. Anyone got any files? I know Cameron's got five already. This Cameron sits here and does that. <laughs> yeah, it's not hard. I loved it. I mean, if you find the beginning and the ending, I mean, you guys actually got it easier. Because I showed you exactly how to find the next file and how to subtract one, and boom, you got the ending location. And Cameron over there sitting and said, damn it, why didn't you tell me that in the office? Because he spent a lot more time on it. I came in like two hours ago, and he was still doing it. So just remember, certain files like PNGs, even though you got the ending, that's not really the ending of the sector. But try exporting at least one or two of these and make sure you get it to work. Because if you can't get it to export and open, then you know you did something wrong and then your numbers are most likely wrong. So if you give the correct numbers, they should open. I stress should. What was the executable file you used? That's the one Roy made. You okay. will love it. Is it okay? <laughs> That's like, no, it's the opposite of love. <laughs> It's the most fantastic thing the world has ever seen twice. <laughs> twice. Uh, there's no viruses. Well, boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is there is <laughs> okay, we will be using this image later in this class, so don't delete it. Okay, we're about out of time. Any questions? So the beginning of the, of the image is right where the highlight begins. That's your beginning. Right. So when I went over here, he's asking, is the beginning of the image? Yeah, right there when I selected this 51500 is right there. That 51500 is the left column, it's the 89. But you know, I, I did not show that last time when I showed you how to get the beginning and the ending and subtract and do it, save as or save selection. That's so much easier. Actually, a student showed me that. Like, you know, you could just do save selection. I'm like, oh, I never even thought of that. Because that's fine, but when you start... Copying a five meg file in the memory, the thing will crash. You'd be like, man, I lost all my work. What Cameron did is he just made a spreadsheet, file whatever, PNG whatever, and starting and ending. Okay, and the PDF is up there showing you all the questions, saying exactly what they are. So put down question one, answer. Question two, answer. Make sure you submit it by 5 p.m. on the day of Tuesday, next Tuesday. Okay? Everybody happy? All right, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>